Paul claimed that with a rocket mass heater, you could heat your house with the twigs that fell in your yard. Even if we accept that, we only need one eighth the amount of wood as with a wood stove, an efficient house in a cold climate will need three to four cords of wood. A cord is four feet by four feet by eight feet. That's a lot of twigs and much more than fall in my front yard. So my response to that is a bit of something I heard in high school. It goes like this. While paddling up shit creek in your canoe and all four tires fall off, how many pancakes does it take to build a doghouse? The answer is none, because ice cream has no bones. So when addressing her question here, <laughs> I'm kind of thinking like, a lot of this doesn't tie into the other stuff. Um, she seems to say three to four, like we're saying that a um, rocket mass heater needs three to four cords of wood. I'm saying that a rocket mass heater needs one tenth of that. Um, and then she mentions the size of a cord, which at this point doesn't really matter. Um, and so the bottom line is, is that I believe that for my home, it would require six cords of wood to heat it through the winter with a conventional wood stove. But I heated it last winter with 0 0.60 cords of wood. One tenth, exactly. Well, if you live in a one quarter acre lot and you only have one tree in the yard, you're probably right. Yep. And if you might be your... able to take the leaves that fall every fall and ram them into a little <laughs> thing of a bob and, and create. If that's your perception leaf of 100%. Wood. That's your perception of, of, of average. So, yeah. You know, there's, there's yeah. people who live in high-rise apartments where there's 27 families in that same quarter acre and they don't have any trees, so clearly it would be false in that case. Because they, But is it false because they have no yard? <laughs> right. right, but okay, so we, we heat with less than a quart a year. Um, I have bought two quarts in six years. That was the first couple of years when we hadn't gotten dry wood cured yet. Um, and now we, I mean, we do have some trees that came down because the road got moved. We have some trees that come down in the winter when the snow is heavy and then gets rained on. So it's not just twigs, but we have had to find creative uses for spare logs on this property because six years living there with two rocket mass heaters in two different family homes, we are not able to process the number of trees that are falling down on yeah. that 12 acre property. Trees or branches or whatever. Or whatever, yeah. And and I still don't, we still both feel like we need to do more clearing of dead and down for fire protection. We're in the dry western forest. I was going to say, and thank goodness so, for that because more biomass is hitting the ground and staying Yeah, there. well, and that's what I started doing is I've started making hugel beds with some of the logs and trying to make, like, water retaining gardening. And I've started, like, experimenting with hugel wicks on the side of the pond crater so that we can move water along that and have more growing space. And it's like, you could, there's a lot of things you can do with logs besides burn them. Um, but, yeah, the uh, and, and I think your anecdote that she's remembering came from a Portland place where we lived that was two acres and had um, a fireplace, two fireplaces and a rocket mass heater that also couldn't process wood as fast as it would come into that place. And so, um, I mean, it started there. Yeah. And, and then I've heard from many people where it's like, that's all they use. They yeah. heat their home and they live in a cold climate and they heat their home with nothing but the branches and twigs that naturally fall off the trees in their yard. They don't need to have a four by four mega pickup truck and uh, three chainsaws and whatever else to go out into the woods, hack up five trees and bring them all back every winter. And, and I live in an oak forest and, where you don't see the sun because it is that much, <laughs> that's that much oak, canopy. Much, that much canopy. And I do not heat with the wood there because I can't afford to because the scrap wood that I do heat with is so cheap that I can't afford the time to go collect these branches to come and feed them in because <laughs> I can get this big pile for a hundred bucks that lasts me more than a year and dump it into banana boxes and that and three of those on a, on a negative 20 day it takes three of those to heat my house for a day and so so that and and so the scrap wood from the waste stream within my community 
costs less to me than paying my kids or, or even uh, myself to go out and gather wood that's falling down around me. I live on 50 acres uh, in California, and I have more than 10 rocket mass eaters. I have all these little cob cottages because I've been teaching workshops there. Yep. I like cutting firewood. I like going down and cutting down trees. And do, but I, we have dead standing stuff because when the... Um, Logging company first came through, they cut all the softwoods, fir and redwood, and what came up first was um, madrones, uh, crap, oaks, uh, tan oaks, and um, manzanita. And now that the firs and redwoods are overtopping the manzanita and the oaks and the madrones, they're all dead. So I have a forest of dead standing wood that's, you know, like I was saying earlier, rocket fuel. If I toss a stick of madrone in there the temperature goes up fast so yeah i mean i'm not a good model for this because you know but my house i could easily heat my house with what i just pull as dead branches off of you know trees without ever having to kill a tree probably but, within just a couple hundred feet of your house yeah, I mean, I try to kind of clear the couple hundred feet around my house because yeah. it's a major fire hazard out there. Right. And it's not a process of when the forest, of, of if the forest will burn down, but when. Yeah. And right now, major portions of California are on fire. Right. And my home, fortunately, is long enough, far enough away that it's not immediately endangered. But, um, you know, next year that could change. But, but, but she's saying, if we go back to what she's saying, that... If we take as an average a house that uses four cords of wood a year, yeah, and we say and 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 then she's then accepting that that with that uh, uh, an eighth of that, which is half a cord, okay, half a cord you can reasonably scrounge up in a neighborhood totally from people just making little two by four projects from Home Depot and from watching when your neighbor sticks their stuff out for the shredder and uh, and. And that one tree in your yard, breaking those things off and bringing them in, um, you can reasonably scrounge a half a cord. And that's what we're talking about. And that's what she's accepting. She, she's saying, even if you assume this, well, actually, we do assume this because we've practiced it. We've seen it happen. She's saying four cords of wood, and then I think that's the starting point, and she left out a bit of math. So four cords of wood is like hard to imagine coming off of your trees. And it's like, I agree. Yeah. But we're not saying four cords of wood. We're saying the half, half a cord. cord. <laughs> yeah. And four that's easy to see five. as like just... I got 10 rocket mass stuff. heaters. I know, I know I live in Northern California. It doesn't get that cold. But I'm not burning a full cord of wood in a full year. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think that my oven, my, my wood-fired bread oven, I burn more wood in yeah. that than I do in all 10 of my rocket mass heaters. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com, where we talk about rocket mass heaters, homesteading, and permaculture all the time.